Good morning, everybody. Another one. Everybody, this is Nathan Souter from Drake, Ontario, and you are watching Trucker Josh Vlogs on YouTube. Another one. As you can tell by the shape of it, it's a little different than the last couple underneath. Same deal though. Tarped, going to Brainerd. Let's go. Just like I mentioned in yesterday's video, after we're done unloading today in Brainerd yet, we're going to head over to Fargo, North Dakota. There's a load waiting for us there. We'll put it on our trailer tomorrow morning. We'll head home with that. When I get home, I'm gonna have to take a look at my starter. I think the solenoid might be going on it or maybe there's just a bad connection. Sometimes this morning when I tried to start it, it's not cranking. Fiddle with the ignition for a little bit and then it cranks over, then it goes. So it made me a little bit nervous. I could hear that the, the starter was spinning though. So you know how when the starter spins, uh, it spins and then it shoots out the gear, right? which turns the motor and then it sucks it back in. Like, I can hear it spinning. So I think it's just a little, it's not shooting out the gear into the motor to, cause the starter's spinning, it's, but it's not cranking the motor. That could mean that I need a whole new starter. I, I don't think it's the solenoid if the starter's actually turning in there, though it could be. I mean, I'm not the, the, the biggest expert. I've had this stuff happen to me before. That's why I knew what the issue was right away. Oh, great. Here goes the starter. So, uh, <laughs> that's something we'll be dealing with along the way. Hopefully, uh, well, we'll have the part waiting for us at home and, uh, we'll get it switched out when we get there. So hopefully it won't give us too many issues until then. I just got to get this load delivered, go pick up my next one. That one's going to take me back. Fingers crossed. At least it's just a starter, right? And not a blown piston or blown motor or anything starter is easy practically it's a bolt-on part for most part for the most part i don't know what they're going for nowadays though probably a few hundred bucks like i always say we fix it and we move on when you come up to a problem you don't panic you don't stress out i'm talking to myself now because i usually panic and stress out <laughs> stressing about this the whole time talking to myself now stay calm we have a plan there's a part waiting for us back home the truck is running now it does crank over the starter is turning it's just it doesn't always want to grab the motor we're gonna be okay it's fine oh yeah that ledge is getting worse and worse every day a huge repaving operation going on here. Going in this direction when I'm headed down towards Brainerd, I can go right through here, but this is obviously just one lane, one way, right? On the way back up to Ontario, you have to go down a back road off to my left, south of here, which is actually in better shape than this. Typical Karen, 
think and everything about her. I'm going to tell you what else. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, I was waiting for that. Okay. I've been thinking about the starter. I'm going to replace it. But I think that's something I can do myself. From what I've looked, I've looked online a little bit, did some reading. What is this guy doing? Okay, I thought he was turning in here with his two trailer combination. <laughs> At 100 meters, turn left on MN6. From what I've been looking up and reading, researching, the starter is practic pretty much just three bolts and then a bunch of uh, a bunch of connections. I'll wait for you, bud. See, he's unloading me really quick. I'll be in and out of here. Tarps rolled up, equipment all put away. Less than 45 minutes. And off. On the way to Fargo, North Dakota, which is another 239 kilometers, two and a half hours of driving. That's about 150 miles. In there somewhere, just guesstimating, 150 miles. I want to try and find a spot to park at the Flying J, though I have my doubts that it'll work because that flying J in Fargo I've been very disappointed in the direction of their parking lot in the last few years that parking lot used to be a go-to for me there was always spots to park well it got full but you know it was filled up with drivers that actually needed to park now you go to the Fargo flying J like I guess this is at the risk of me sounding like I'm complaining because I am bear with me Fargo North Dakota the flying J a third, I'd say close to between a quarter and a third of the parking spots. Last time I was there with my father-in-law when we were looking for spots was drop trailers. It almost looked like an entire like company's trailers were just scattered through the parking lot, taking up just two dozen parking spots, just drop trailers. And if it wasn't that, it was people's personal vehicles parked in truck parking spots, uh, a huge number of bobtails. I understand that's a that's a truck stop by truck stop scenario. Usually I always when I'm bobtailing, I won't take up a full five like 75 foot spot. That spot, someone with a trailer who's been driving all day needs that spot. I'm bobtailing. I can go park anywhere. 
sometimes there's a there's a bobtail and RV side at Flying J you can go park at. Sometimes there's a bobtail section you can park in, and people still park in the big spots even though there's a section for them. And then, uh, or you could go, you could park anywhere. Walmart, any, any parking lot anywhere, side of the street. Your bobtail. It's almost like you're driving a car. Like you can park anywhere. You don't need a full spot, but. I would go to the truck stop, park in a spot if I can't find anywhere else, go in, have my shower, get what I need for the night, and then move my truck out of that spot and to a different lot somewhere if I have to, just so that's someone who comes in who needs it. Because there's nothing more frustrating than, you know, end of a long day, you're coming in with a full load, you get to the truck stop and half the spots are bobtails. Or half the spots are, uh, you know, drop trailers. So I apologize if I sound like I'm a little bit frustrated. I was last time I was there. I'm not frustrated right now. It's a long time ago. I'm over it, believe me. Sort of. Maybe not really. Not really over it, am I? I'm still kind of upset about that. But we got there, and the whole lot, there was only maybe, like, out of, let's say, 100 parking spots, there was only maybe 30 spots left for actual drivers who needed them, and those fill up very fast. Those fill up very fast. The reason I bring that all up now is because that's where I'm headed tonight, and I'm going to get there hopefully before midnight, around 11, but no, between like, around 10.30 is when I'm gonna get there. I'm guessing it's gonna be the same scenario. I talked to the manager there at Flying J. I asked him what was up with all the drop trailers, and apparently they don't have authorization to drop them. That's why I bring it up. It's not like they had permission. No, this, like, some company there is dropping trailers and just leaving them there either all weekend or all week, and not asking permission. Which then the next question would be like, I, I just told them, you know what, if, if you're not allowed to drop trailers at the truck stop parking lot, that's a big rule, it's a big taboo. Unless you go and ask permission, they usually give you a day or a four hour period or whatever, they, they got to get your plate number down and stuff. And uh, you know, they'll give you a certain amount of time. It's not like they never let you park there or drop your trailer there, but this, this was over the top. And if they hadn't asked permission and they're just dumping all these trailers in your lot and leaving them there for days, I told them, you know what? tow them get a wrecker out here get them all out of here bring them to some big impound lot somewhere and let the owner of them deal with it that's what i would do but maybe i'm way off base maybe i'm out of line you know i'm willing to be wrong if i'm wrong and i'm just if that's just the way it is okay if that's if that's within the boundaries of the rules then i have nothing inconvenient for us drivers who need a spot at night but if you're okay with it and you own the place hey it's your place, right? Your place. And I guess I'll just bring my business somewhere else. <laughs> There's a nice stay mark down the road. Not as big of a truck stop chain, but they have awesome truck stops. There's a Loves across the street. I can go over there. I got a fuel card for Loves too. I'm going to start fueling over there. I mean, they never have dropped trailers at Loves in Fargo. Never. But they don't have a big, very big parking lot either. So, uh... It's not just this far where this is a thing. I, I've noticed this in many different places across Canada, too. Uh, a lot of truck stops in Canada sort of turn into almost warehouse yards. You know, guys, they just pull in there. They think they can just leave everything they own there. And, you know, they'll, like, they'll take a spot because they live nearby with their truck. And then when they leave on a trip, they'll put their personal vehicle in that parking spot and just leave it there for weeks while they're on a trip just to save their spot for when they get back, right? And they don't always ask permission to do that either. And sometimes their cars get towed. And other times the, it just, just ends up just staying, them staying like that. I don't know. Have you guys noticed this where you are too? Am I the only one? I need to know. I need to feel like I'm not alone. We got our paperwork signed. Everything's off the trailer. Except for my equipment, which has been secured, put away properly, nice and neat. And now we'll go check out the situation in Fargo. What's the situation? Another load complete, another happy customer.
if I didn't show you, you wouldn't believe me. I got a parking spot, like right near the front too. Right in an open spot where I could drive straight out in the morning. It's a, it's a safe spot, that's what I call it. Where I don't gotta worry about my neighbors ripping off my hood first thing in the morning because they can just drive straight out here to the wide open lot. Nice. I was not expecting that. And it looks like all of the drop trailers from the last time are gone. They held true to their work. Maybe I made a difference. I mean, I did talk to them about having like two dozen drop trailers in their lot last time I was here. I didn't think they'd actually listen. Nice. It probably had nothing to do with me. Eh, there. They probably had lots of complaints. I was probably just one of many. Looks like we got lucky tonight. And it's good to see that, you know, this whole parking lot is filled up with drivers who need them. You know, every spot is filled by a driver who needs that spot. Total total like black and white difference from the last time I was here maybe that was just a bad day but today was a good day found parking got a load on the north side of Fargo tomorrow morning and I like I was saying before I think I told you already a couple times I want to get unloaded tomorrow tomorrow's Friday I want to get loaded first thing and then get to Winnipeg get unloaded and then go home and then I'm hoping I can find a starter for this truck. I'm hesitant turning this truck off right now. I'm just gonna leave it running until I get home. Uh, because last time I shut it off, uh, the starter didn't want to engage the engine. It was spinning, but it didn't want to engage the engine. So I wanna make sure I can get home. I can get the part and just replace it myself, I'm pretty sure. Like I was saying, just three bolts and a couple of wires and we're good to go. I, I can do it myself. Never done it before, but I'm going to figure it out. Save myself some money. I just got to find that part. So if I call into my regular uh, shop where I take this thing for services, see if they have it. If they don't have the part, then I'll call Kenworth and Winnipeg to see if they have the part. I'll find it somewhere. It's a starter. I mean, it's got to be pretty common, right? I hope I don't have a big long wait on it anyways. Mm. Thanks for joining me today everybody though. It's been a fun day. Tune in tomorrow for some more fun. We're going to go all the way back up to Winnipeg. Oh! But first I'm going to go to this wonderful, wonderful place that's in my head. Where dreams come true. Every time. Every time. It's uh... I have to lay down right over there. This is like my, my routine. I lay down right there and I close my eyes and before you know it, I'm in dreamland. Do you guys dream at all? Is it true that some people never dream? If you've never had a dream in your life, let me know down below in the comments section. Do you dream every night? Do you remember your dreams? My dreams are weird. I remember them only for about an hour after I wake up and I'll remember them vividly and sometimes they'll even make perfect sense like it'll be a whole storyline and nice beginning middle and end and I'll wake up like wow that wrapped up really nicely what a nice story that was and an hour later don't remember a thing about it I never remember my dreams for very long but I know I have them What's it like for you? Can you control your dreams? Sometimes I can. Most often I'm just along for the ride. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.